Hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. Anybody who can hear me, I don't know whether anyone's actually listening. Um, and I need to ping the Discord before I start. But uh, give me a second, give me a second. I'll let people sort of connect. It, the stream might drop while I ping the Discord. Give it give it a sec, we'll just see what happens. Has it, has it dropped? Oh no, I think I'm back. I think we're connected. Okay, reconnect. Fantastic. Right, I've pinged the Discord. I'm here. Um, hope you're all doing well. Those of you who are here, hope you're having a fabulous Sunday. Um, if someone could just confirm in the chat that you can actually hear me, that would be marvellous. Um, before I launch into the material for today's stream. Um, hello, Ravenstar. Hello, Bobby. Hello, Verdugo. Hello, Batty. Welcome, 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 welcome. Reven confirms you can hear me. That is amazing. Fantastic. Hello, Kevin, the Prince Dragon. And hello, Butane Boss. So, welcome back to part four of the PC building extravaganza. Update on last time. I took the PC to a man who lives at the end of my road, who is an IT specialist. He took it all apart, tested every component, and we determined that the most likely problem was that the motherboard was defective. So I started a return process on Amazon, sent my motherboard back and ordered a new one, which has just arrived in the last 10 minutes. So we're gonna be installing that today and giving it a test. Now, to temper expectations, it might not be the motherboard that the pro was the problem. The CPU could be the problem, in which case this won't fix it. Alternatively, we could have a second defective motherboard, which, might mean, which would mean changing it also doesn't fix it. However, the likelihood is, and having run the numbers probabilistically, I reckon there's slightly better than 50% chance that this will fix it, so let's give it a go. Now, I can vaguely remember what we're supposed to do from last time, so this should be a much more rapid process. I've got about an hour to stream now, so we're going to go ahead and do it um, and uh, see how we get on and hopefully fire it up uh, in the next hour and determine whether or not this has resolved the problem. So it's all very exciting, but try not to get too excited because we might not have a success today. However, we're going to keep at this process for however long it takes over the next few days of sending parts back and having them replaced and whatever until it actually works. So what exactly is being fixed? Kevin, we are upgrading my PC, which is upgrading the CPU, the RAM, the motherboard, uh, the CPU cooler and the power supply. Um, we're testing, we're, we're upgrading it all, but the problem we ran into was that the motherboard wasn't working, so we've replaced the motherboard with a new motherboard. Here it is, here's the fresh motherboard. Let me just turn the camera around so you can see what's going on in the box. This is a fresh one, and because uh, the return process hasn't sort of completed yet, this is definitely not the same motherboard that I sent back, because I always worry if you send one back and they send you a replacement, I'll just send you the same one back again. Um, but this is a new one. This is definitely not the same one. And I suspect the last one we had was the last one in stock. So I wonder if the last one before was the last of a previous batch. And this is part of a new batch of motherboards. They certainly updated the description and the price on this one compared to the last one we got. So I'm hopeful that this might have a better chance at being successful than one we had before. Now, when I handle this, I'm going to ground myself on the metal of my desk uh, over on the left. Yeah, yeah, compatibility, we've all sorted. We're all across the compatibility, Vertigo. It's definitely all compatible. It's just a matter of hoping that this one ain't broke like the last one was. So let's see how we get on. So I'm going to pop you on the side while we get it out. We're going to be very careful. And we're going to see whether it behaves. So let's get it out. Let me lift it up. This out the way so that we've got room to maneuver. Grounding myself on the PC case to avoid static discharge. Trying to take the label off. There we go. Making sure to only hold the C the motherboard by the non-circuity bits. There we go. Motherboard removed. Twizzle it round. There it is. We'll do a quick visual inspection to make sure it looks as it should. Can't uh, You guys have a look as well. Tell me if you can spot anything that looks broken or duff. What I'm about to do is we're going to open up the CPU socket 
and see whether any of the pins are bent, because there was one slightly bent pin on the last one, which could have been the problem. So we're going to undo this. Lift that up. Take that bit and lift it open. And we're going to inspect the CPU socket nice and closely. So here we go. Make nice and close. We might just pop a light on, just for some extra, extra vision. Can anyone see a bent pin? Or a missing capacitor? Anything looking not as it should be? I think, tentatively, that that all looks fine. I can't see any bent pins. I think it looks as it should do. Where are you seeing a hole? Kevin? What I'm seeing is it all looks okay. I mean, yeah, there's a hole in the middle of it, but I'm pretty sure that hole should be there. Shouldn't that hole be there? I feel like it should be there. It looks like it's meant to be there, or do you think there's meant to be a component in that hole? I think it's fine. Yeah, I'm satisfied. So we're going to start assembling this cheeky little chappy. I'm going to pop the uh, ground myself off again, and we'll pop the thing back down. We're not going to put the CPU in just yet. So now I'm going to grab the CPU cooling backplate, which all still looks okay. And we're going to pop this on the back of it, as we did before, so that the pins stick through. So we're going to lift it up very carefully and take this and pop it on the back. So that that all looks okay. And then we're going to lift up the motherboard and pop it into place on the PC. So you probably won't see this very well at your camera angle. But I'm going to pick it up, take it over here to the PC, ground myself again, and then we're going to pop it into place. That's over in the corner. Gently rest it down. Oh, of course, I haven't actually put on. I might lift it out again for a second just to properly attach the CPU cooling fan on the other side so it doesn't fall out. So let's just lift it out again. Just pop it back there because I need to screw on the mounting plates for the CPU cooler and we might as well pop the CPU in before we pop it in the um, in the motherboard as well. Uh, actually, no, we'll put the CPU when it's in the motherboard, but let's put the mounting things on. So they are, where have I put them? The CPU mounting bits I've got somewhere around here. In fact, they're probably in this box. Here we are. So we need four little blue spaces. Thank you so much for the donation, Ravenstar. That's massively appreciated. Thank you. So I'm going to put on four spaces. They look like this. These little blue spaces, we get one of those on each of the legs of the CPU cooling backplate. And then we get these two, and we pop them on. And we need them to be in the middle hole. And 
Yep, Imagination Gamer, we have ordered a fresh motherboard and we are installing that now. Just making sure it's all in the right holes. We'll get the last one. Thank you, Starrell. Much appreciated. Luck is needed. As I say, as I said earlier, there's absolutely no guarantee this will work today. We're speculating, but we're giving it our best shot. Hi, Unrivaled. Yeah, well, we had some problems before, but we're going to cross our fingers that this time it's going to work. So we'll see. Let's tighten that up so it's nice and tight. Now the thing is, Verdugo, you don't have to be nervous because there aren't actually any consequences. If this doesn't work, it's absolutely fine. We'll order the next part and we'll just carry on. Because if it doesn't work, it's only if I break it. If I break it myself, then I won't get a refund on it. But if it's broken, you know, if they've shipped us another Duff one, then that's not our fault. We'll get the refund. We order another one. We carry on. You know, slow and steady, methodically, we just do one thing at a time, replace one part at a time until we get it working. So never fear, it's all going to be fine. It's just a question of whether or not it's fine today or at some day in the future. It would be ideal if this could be fine today because I do really want to use my PC. I have things I need it for coming up. But, um, you know, you can only do what you can do. Only do what you can do. So we've popped that plate on. So now we're ready to pop the motherboard into the PC case. So we're going to pick it up again, holding it very carefully and try and align it with the mounting screws. Pop it in like that. Gently does it until the hole lines up, which it will at some point. There it is. There's the hole. And then we gently lower it down. Hey, Jordan Golden, have a great time at the beach. No, this isn't all just for Starfield, Kevin. Starfield was what precipitated this upgrade. Starfield was the game that showed me, yeah, your CPU really does need an upgrade. But I've been aware of it for quite some time that my CPU is not quite up to snuff. So it's, um, it's quite, you know, it's not just for Starfield. This is a general upgrade that's been a long time coming. And Starfield was the straw that broke the camel's back, as it were. I would not be spending this much exclusively for Starfield. So there we go, that's in. I need to align it, give it a little wiggle, and then we'll start putting the screws in. What kind of programs did I have in my PhD work except Office? So I used most of my programming I did in MATLAB for the PhD. A little bit of Python. Um, a couple of other special specialist things for our sensing kit. Xsense software. Can I give this a little wiggle? Try and get those holes lining up. There we go. That looks pretty good to me. That's getting into the right position. That's getting into the right position. Okay, we can start putting the case screws in. Case screws I have in a little bowl over here. We're gonna do those with 
our little screwdriver over here. Just check that's the right size. Oh, that's not quite the one I wanted. I wanted that one. And we're learning our lesson this time and we're not going to put the CPU cooler on or the CPU until we've screwed in these corner screws and wired and connected up the cables because it was a pain doing that without, you know, after we'd put the CPU cooler in. So how can I put you so you can see this better? Put you like that, that's probably better. Right. One screw at a time. Ground myself again while I do this. And just give that a gentle couple of turns just to get it in place. That one's in. The instinct is to try and rush this when I feel like I know what I'm doing and you've got to resist that temptation. You've got to go slow and steady because it's the only way to build a PC. Yeah, that one's going in. Let's just check the alignment of the front panel. It's not quite right, it's a tiny bit too far up. There we go. gently does it. Hello Zotic! I don't know who you are. Oh you're Timo! Hey Timo! How do you find this? That's very unusual. Timo went to school with me many years ago. How on earth did you come across this Timo? Hope you're doing well though. Ross says you get your monitor this weekend and it's the last piece of the puzzle. Hopefully bro will be building it in this weekend. Nervous but excited that everything will be smooth and butter and has no issues. Well, you don't know that. It might have issues. If it does, try and stay calm. Remember, it will all get sorted eventually. Just as we're doing here, one step at a time. It will all be okay. What went wrong with the PC? We had a faulty motherboard. That's what went wrong before. So we've replaced the motherboard with a fresh one and we're hoping it's gonna work this time. And I'm gonna try not to lose this screw because last time when I tried to put this screw in, we lost it. And it took like half an hour of searching for it. But we've not lost it, it's going in. There you go. Screw in alignment. I'm still not quite happy with that alignment there. I was kind of hoping as I tighten the screws it'll pop into place. But it's not quite. It's nearly there. Oh, actually, I think as I put the other screws in it will align. Right, and then this one We'll put down in the bottom left. Don't lose it, Joseph. I feel like that one might have crossed thread. Let's just have a look with the other one. Oh no, it will tighten. Here we go, let's realign it. Nope. Come on, out you come. And then, that's better. That's a much better fit. There we go. And we've got one more screw, which we'll pop in. You like my Lucy and Carrie to mod subbed and saw you alive. Oh, no way! Huh? 
Small world? Hope all is well in Romania. What are you doing over there? Have you moved? <laughs> One, two, three. Where should I put the last screw? There's a couple of potential places it could go. Let's pop it in. Got one there, got one there, got one there. Let's pop it in over there. Okay, all the screws we have are now in, so I'm now I'm going to tighten it up a bit. Make sure we're happy. Try and get it all nicely aligned. We're not going too tight, we're just going as tight as it'll go without having to force it. As gently is the way. Right, motherboard is screwed in, show you. As ever, whenever I do one of these show you things, sing out if something seems horribly wrong. But we've got screws in that corner, the middle one there, that corner there, this corner over there, and that corner down there, which is all the screws we've got. There's a couple of holes where if we had more case screws, we could put them in as well. But um, I think that's the best we're going to get. So... We will now go back to front camera and we'll now pop in the RAM, I think. So the RAM I've got in a box over here. So far, so good. So far, nothing horribly broken. But of course, as I say, we could be wasting our time here because it could be the CPU that's the issue, at which point when we pop in the CPU, it still won't work. It's just statistically slightly less likely that the CPU is the issue. So the RAM, we're going to pop in slot two and four. Can I just pop down the little handles? Okay, that one, and that one. We're going to make sure that the slot aligns. So we know we've got it the right way around, which it looks like it does. We'll just gently push it down until it clicks. Or not, as the case may be. Oh no, it needs to go around the other way. That's more like it. Down until it clicks. And down until it clicks. There we go. They're both in. And then the other RAM. Yeah, it would be a good idea to have a screw in every hole, but my case does not have that many screws. So it's not possible. We were driving in a getaway car. We were driving, but you'll never get home. And is in as well. Okay, both RAM sticks are in. Fantastic. Don't need the RAM box anymore. Okay, let's do the CPU. CPU is a Core i9, 13th gen. Yeah, there are standoffs between the motherboard and the case. They're built into the case. Okay, CPU time. Now, before we put this in, I need to open up the CPU thing. Right, 
we've opened up the CPU socket. Hey, Lek, hope you're well. Hey, Laura Johnston. So here's the socket. Again, now that we've opened it up, still no bent pins. We're still happy. So we're going to get the CPU out and pop it in. And just to show you guys, here is the CPU. Before I touch it or anything, I'm just going to show you so we can do a visual inspect ourselves. Here is the CPU with its pins. Does that all look fine to you? To me, it looks fine. All looks as it should do. That's the reverse side. Just making sure we're happy. I'm happy. Well, I'm going from my old CPU, which had four cores, to my new CPU. This one has 24 cores. So I'm expecting a quite significant boost in multitasking ability. So now grounding myself again, I'm going to take this out and pop it into place with the arrow in the bottom left, pointing into the bottom left of the socket like that, making sure that the little notches align, which they do, and it nicely slots into place. So now I should be able to pop that back down. And that makes this little cover pop off. I think that's just a visual effect of the um, of the shape of it, to be honest. I don't think the pins themselves were discoloured. But thanks for pointing it out, Laura. I think it's just, you know, the shape of them in the light. Right, so now I'm going to put down the little handle. And it's in. CPU is in. RAM is in. Looks okay. All looks about right. But it might be, you know, it might not be right. You might be absolutely right, Laura. There might be a problem with the CPU. That could very well be the issue when we need to be prepared for that today, that it might not work. Even though we swapped out the motherboard, even though it looks like it's got no problems, it might not work today. So now we need to wire it up and we need to attach on the CPU cooler. And I'm going to wire it up first because it was really difficult to wire it up when we put the CPU cooler on first. So we have got the motherboard power, which needs to go in exactly where it's currently positioned. Gently does it. There we go, that went in really easily this time is a good sign. There we go, and it's latched on. Happy days. We have got this one here, which is the CPU power, or one of the two CPU powers. So let's get both of those. That's GPU power. This is another CPU power. Make sure they're untangled, so we're not going to have any cable problems. And we're going to pop this one. It's got to be rotated round so that the latch is on that side. So that should just click on like that. Easy peasy. And the same goes for this one, where the latch is just going to pop on like that. How easy was that compared to what we did before? There you go, mother CPU powers in. I'm not going to bother putting the GPU in at the moment because we won't need that to boot. So this should boot quite happily without a GPU. So we're going to see how it gets on with that. Um, it's just one more thing to go wrong when we're testing. 
Then what else do we got? We got satyrs. We got the case power. Case power's got to go in. So let's just show you that. Now this is a particularly fiddly one that we found quite difficult last time. There are the pins, it's marked JUSB3, and we've got to get this cable on there, which is quite a difficult one to align. This is, sorry, this isn't case power, this is connecting the case buttons, the front case panel switches. We'll connect with that, so we're going to get that right. And I'm going to focus on that with two hands again, so you can sit over there. And I need to get this right without bending the pins. So let's just check the orientation. There's the blocked square. It needs to line up perfectly with that. Be very, very, very careful. No pressure at all. And it just gently eases on, which is what that's done there, just like that. Perfect. Happy with that. Yes, that's the front USB 3, exactly. So now we need to get, we don't need the GPU power or the other GPU power, because we're not connecting them today. Well, we are connecting them today, but later, if it all works, we're not going to worry about it if it doesn't, obviously. Now, what have we got here? This is SATA power. Listen to the rain outside. I don't know if you can hear that. It's finally raining after so much hot weather. It's really nice. Hopefully it's going to cool things down. All right, let's pop the SATA power in. go. Power up the hard drives and the disk drives, which we will need to test the boot. And we're going to need the SATA cables connected to the little SATA stack, which is down there. It's quite fiddly doing this. There's one. Then we've got this one, which has got to connect in down there. And we've got the red one from the disk drive, which is going to connect in there. There we go, that's the SATA connections. All done, get that on as securely as I can. Okay, now we have the case, sorry, these are the case switches. Hey, Macafish, hope you're well. Oh, hang on, what's this? This one here is audio. This is audio cable, and that one's got to go on J-A-U-D. Make sure they're lined up, which they are. And just pop it on. Perfect. I hate that I have to connect most of these things up first to test if it'll boot. I mean, I guess we could get away without the audio, but I wish I could just test it more easily than this. But I really should try and wire it up first, and we do need a CPU cooler on it. So we'll just trust, you know, give it its best shot to be okay. Now, where's the six pin thing? I'll just consult the manual on these switches. Manual being in here, because I can't remember the layout. Here we are. Here's our little instructions for how to connect up the front power button and the reset button and so on, and the LEDs. So this is JFP1, which is in the bottom right. 
and we're going to get the these little bad boys and we want the power switch to be above the missing one go that one's on then directly above that we need the power led for which the positive is there which needs to go on the end one and we need the power led negative which is i've lost that one hang on here it is power led negative which goes on in between. And it's quite difficult to do with the positive on. Let's pop the positive off. Put the negative on first. There we go, negative's on. And then power positive. We'll go on to the end. There we go. Then we need Hard drive, LED, positive and the negative on the outside. A bit tricky to do this. Is that tangled up? Let's just untangle it. There you go. That out. Sorry, I know this isn't very interesting because you can't see, but I've got to concentrate on getting this right. Nope. Let's do the switch first. HDD, sw a reset switch. Just go in on there, just like that. So that's down, which means this one now just has to pop on on the last one, which is over there and down. There we go. That's those all done. Keep ourselves grounded. OK, I think that's all the power. We've got both CPU powers on. We've got motherboard power, motherboard audio, case connection. We have no loose wires left, which is always a good sign. So that is all wired up. Tuck those wires out the way so that we can see what we're doing because now we need to put on the case fan and for that we need to apply some thermal paste. Not case fan, the um, oh the case fans, of course the case fans they need to be connected up. Um, and this, this is the cable for the system fan as well, so the CPU fan. Let's just find that. So one marked CPU fan. CPU fan one. That goes there. Like that. And it's a Y splitter, so I can attach both CPU fans to it. So that should be fine. Then we want our system fans. Let's just find those. Let's have a look. This one is system fan one, which is gonna go on the system fan one there. Like that. And then where's my system fan two? That's system fan three. Yeah, there's system fan two. Which is going to go on like that. Okay, system fans are all connected. So now CPU is going to have to go on and CPU cooler is going to have to go on. And for that, we need our thermal paste, which I have over here with our little paddle. Oh, just to show you what I'm doing here switch it around. Again, it's very frustrating that we can't do this without, but it's very dangerous to power up your CPU without having a cooler on it, so we just have to make do. So this is where my, this is my CPU. 
to keep that tucked out of the way. And we need to put a dab on here. What's my favourite Pokemon? Totodal Red. Totodile is my favourite because it was my first starter. And I love him very much. Let's just just oh, I've instantly got thermal paste all over my hands. But yeah, so we want a big dob in the middle. Oh, no, you can't do it with the cap on. Can't do it with the cap on, people. Cannot apply thermal paste if thermal paste cap is on thermal paste tube. Right. Big dob in the middle. It'll come out. There we go. And a few dobs near the corner, and we're going to spread this round. That might well be enough to start with. We can add some more if it's no good. But, uh, where shall I pop that? Pop that over there. Get our little paddle, which is in my other hand. I'm getting thermal paste all over my phone case right now. And we're going to spread this out like we did before. Into a nice thin layer, covering the whole lot. Is it hard to get thermal paste off? No, it's not, but you need remover. So I've got some thermal paste cleaner, specifically to take the thermal paste off, which is what I used on the CPU before. So with that, it comes off very easily. That and a lint cloth is what you need. You know what I mean by a lint cloth? Like what you'd use for glasses, clean your glasses. There we go, nice thin layer, covering the whole lot. Up to the edges. That's correct, Luna, this isn't Starfield. Well done. This is applying thermal paste to a CPU. Now, I feel like, as a layer, it's a tiny, tiny bit too thin because I'm seeing little gaps. So we might want to apply just a dab more and then spread that out. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll just pop this on one side. Let's pop it over up here on this piece of paper because that's fine to get thermal paste on. We'll get our thermal paste tube and apply just a dab more. Which we can then spread out. Let's pop you over on the other side for a sec. So I can use two hands. as well. Because you don't want holes in your thermal paste. You want it to be a thin layer, but it needs to completely cover it to make a good interface. It doesn't want to be so thin you can see the CPU metal coming through.
and he does it. There we go. I would say I'm fairly happy with that. Looking at it, I'd say that looks pretty good. Hello, Pow Mau Super. Nice to see you. There we go. I'm fairly happy with that layer. Tiny bit of smushing at the bottom, but I don't think it's a problem. I think that looks fairly good. Do we think that looks fairly good, or do you think there's a problem there? I think it looks pretty good. Because remember, it'll squish a little bit when we put down the... When we screw on the, um, the fan, it should spread out a little bit. I think that looks alright. I'm reluctant to put any more on because then it'll leak out. I think that'll be a bit too much. So I'm hoping that's okay. Somebody sing out if it's not. But uh, I'll pop you over there. Looks good, people say. That's good, that's good. Because now we're going to get the cooler, which is this big chap, and screw this on. Which needs to be round like that, and I need to tuck the cables out of the way so it can go on and try and line it up. There we go, I think that's lined up fairly well. Then I get the screwdriver that they've provided. We tighten up the screws one by one. Just a little bit couple of turns on each screw to try and not push too much on either side. Hopefully get them to bite. I don't know whether that actually has done anything at all. Keep turning this until it actually connects. I don't know if it is or whether I'm just spinning pointlessly, which I think I am. Come on, you can do it. See, it always it feels like you're biting, and then you lift off, and it's actually just wibbling freely. I don't want to mess up my thermal paste. Oh, there you go, that felt like something lined up. Let's try that now. Nope. Is that okay? Feels like that's doing something on that side. Yeah. So now on this side. No, that's not biting. Oh, this is really fiddly. Screw the other one a tiny bit just gives a bit more headway. Come on. It just won't. Well, there we go. Is that it? Yes, right. 
Now they're both on, so I can actually tighten them up. We are getting there. Thank you so much, Macafish. Much appreciated, that really does help. Gosh, it's warm. Okay, and that one. There we go. Right, they're now both tightened as much as they can without putting any force on. Brilliant. Oh. Right, now we need to actually attach the CPU fan. Sure the wires are tucked out of the way, which they are. Which is this little chap, this guy. Which we're gonna pop on like this. Oops, not like that. Not like that, and like that. Line it up as low as we can. As low as it'll comfortably go, which is about there. And on about there. Right, that's clipped on. And then the next one, this has got to go into the CPU fan one splitter. There we go. And the other CPU fan which is here. I'll just pop this on as well and it needs to face that way. Oh, hang on. Which way? Confuse myself now. We want the fan. We want it to blow up and out. So why is that on? I confuse myself now. That one needs to be in between. This one needs to be on the outside. Oh, are these the wrong way around? I think I might have these the wrong way around. Not that it matters, they're both the same. I'll just pop the other one off just to check. Confirm that they are both the same. Oh. There we go. SS02, yeah, they are both the same, but I'll pop that on that side as it's supposed to be. In. Wires in the way, we'll leave them out the way. Just get it down flat and as low as it will comfortably go. It is reluctant to get in there, isn't it? What's holding it up? You do actually have to be in the case. There we go. Tuck them out of the way. And that down. And then... Hmm. There we go, right. And now I need to lift it up, get it back in this direction so that it's attached. Perfect. And clip it. Oh, no, not quite perfect, nearly. And that one needs to come 
off. Oh, this is never easy doing this. that and that goes like that just check I'm not crushing a cable in between but I don't think I am so I think that's all okay amazing that one's on and then the other fan which is this one needs to go on as well and face that way one's much easier to put on. He says. Yep. There we go. And that one also plugs into the Y splitter. Okay. Right, we're now all wired up. In theory, everything's connected apart from the GPU. So we should be good to try powering it on and see if this works or whether it was the CPU that was the problem. So let's all cross our fingers, give it our best hopes. We'll see if it works, but if it doesn't, we won't lose any sleep because we will get this working eventually. Move that out of the way. Out of the way. Ooh. Pop this upright. And pop some power in it. Ooh. Power on. And we will try a boot and see if we get that red CPU line, which is entirely possible. Ooh, we don't, we've got a yellow light. That's probably better. It's at least not the same problem that we had before. So that's something. I don't know whether any of the lights should be yellow, but it's something. Oh and it's just turned itself off. Why has it just done that? And it's turning itself on again? Maybe it's thinking. Oh, we got a white light this time. Look, white light. Green light, green light, green is good. Green is the right color. Let's try connecting up a display to this. Thanks, Mr. Video Freak, that is useful to know. Let's try connecting the display. Let's not get too excited, because remember, there's plenty that could still go wrong. No guarantees here. But we'll try, oh, we'll power it off first, actually, before we connect the display. So we'll connect this, and it's gonna go in on the display port socket is going to be like this. We'll also connect a keyboard so we can actually interact with it. And a mouse. No, we haven't connected the GPU yet, Mr. Video Freak. We're doing a test without the GPU before we put the GPU in. So don't worry. Don't worry yourself. We're doing a bare bones test first. Right, we have a keyboard, and we have a mouse. So now, everybody cross your fingers. Here goes nothing. 
see if it goes bang. Anything on the screen? Ooh! Ooh, there's something on the screen. That's a lot further than we've got before. We are in the BIOS. Look! Something lives. Something is alive. Oh. So, CPU frequency. Remember, we'll leave all this at default, I think. I'm not going to try and overclock anything. Just at the moment. But, we've got some action, which is good. So... CPU core temperature 22, motherboard temperature 32, CPU core, fans are spinning, which is good. BIOS version, BIOS build date, yeah, that's the very latest BIOS, that's good. CPU core voltage, yeah. Oh yeah, oh, XMP to get the right RAM speed, that is a good idea, actually. Now, how do I activate that, Ted? You're absolutely right, because this is RAM that is meant to go fast. Do I click? What do I... Uh, I imagine I probably click memory. Oh, look, it shows me all the stuff. Memory, storage. It's got both drives and my disk drive, which is good. We've got fan info. I mean, that seems okay. Got help. Interesting, interesting. Oh, it's got a game boost function. Off game boost disable. I have to look up what all these things do. Just having a little look around. Oh, what's hardware monitor? Ooh, that's interesting. It's got all the information there. Fabulous. Close that, we don't need that anymore. Tell you what, let's not mess around with doing that just at the moment. Let's get it working first, and we can always come back and change the DRAM speed and everything. Because we can do this at any time. So right now, Let's just boot it in as is with default settings and see what's what. Okay. Oh, look, game boost. That's the game boost button. You see, I don't know what this does yet. So I'd better Google it all and figure out what does what. But in the meantime, how do I get from here into Windows now? I want to boot into Windows. Can I just press the X? I'm not sure, it's automatically put me in the BIOS. But I want Windows. F10? Yep, save and exit, no changes, that's fine. Let's see what happens, see if we get any... See if it'll get into Windows, it says entering power saver mode. Oh, but my mouse is has lit up. Look, mouse is lit up. That's my old power supply there. Oh no, it's put me back in the BIOS again. Why, why are you putting me back in the BIOS each time? Choose the boot drive and put it first in line. Ah, oh, that's a good idea, Ted. Let's do that. Let's do that. You're absolutely right. Thanks, Cthulhu and, Cthulhu and Ted. Of course, because it doesn't know where to boot from, does it? So that's why it's going back into the BIOS each time. Okay, let's do that then. Okay. Uh, boot priority. Okay. How do I do this? Where are the buttons? 
I can't remember what the buttons are. This is the one we want. The uh, 1000 gigabyte one that's in current import 7. So that's the one I need it to boot to. Does it need to be plugged into a particular port? I'm sure there's a way you can set which one you want to boot from. Um, I just, I'm sure it must be under storage, or is it not? Oh, here we are, right. Hmm. Advanced F7. Ooh, that's different. Settings. Boot. Fixed boot order priorities. That's probably not it. Hard disk. USB key floppy. USB hard disk. No, that's all fine. We want to boot from hard disk first. My hard drive is not a USB. My hard drive is SATA. And it is connected is what it should be. So that all seems fine. Hydrochloric acid mode. <laughs> yeah, I hope not. Um, okay. Ooh, system status. Yes, yeah, so it knows. It's got the things. I'm sure it must be boot. Okay, I am going to figure this out after lunch. Yeah, yeah, we were at boot priority, but this is just saying what different things it could boot from, and we want it to boot from hard disk, that's correct. So that's, that's fine. We just need to tell it which hard disk to boot from. I might need to switch the order. But I'm going to have to Google this in my own time. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to Google it and look it all up and look up the instructions and figure it out. And, um, and I will get back to you guys about um, where we've got to with it. But the main thing is, right, it's working. Okay, we're at least in the BIOS. Whether there's SSD things to figure out or not, that's, that's a minor problem compared to where we were before, which is that nothing was working and it wouldn't even boot. So it'll boot. We need to figure out how to get it into Windows and everything. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But right now, it's booted up and that's perfect. So I'm delighted with that. So thank you so much for your help, everyone. Thank you for keeping up with this journey. It's been such a journey. Thank you so much for keeping up with this build journey. Um, I will do another stream maybe tomorrow, sometime soon anyway. The next stream, we will demonstrate this thing in action. We can do some benchmarking and see, see how it performs. But we've made it this far, and this I'm going to chalk up as a win. So we have won. We've booted into the motherboard. It thinks it's four o'clock in the morning. We need to change the system clock, but we're there. So thank you, everyone. You're all marvellous. Thank you, especially to everyone who donated and stuff. And yeah, I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.